Which test tones should you use when you're setting your gains and what exactly is gain overlap? Let's see if we can figure this out. Now before we can figure all that out, we need to know a little bit about the way that music is recorded. The maximum loudness for recorded music is zero dB and that seems kind of strange because out here in the real world, we don't think of it like that. We think of decibels as something much larger than zero dB. A quiet room, for example, is more than zero decibels. A chainsaw is more than zero decibels. A jet engine taking off is more than zero decibels. And of course, a loud stereo is more than zero decibels. But the dB numbers we're talking about here are decibels of boost or cut. And it's based on a mathematical conversion from decibels to voltage and then back again. And this zero dB thing is just a trick we use to make the math a whole lot easier. You can just express everything in terms of gain or loss from zero. So to gain loudness, you increase the voltage, you turn up the gain. If you've ever used an equalizer, this should make sense. Equalizers are set up to either cut or boost by some amount of dBs. And the boost is labeled as a plus and the cut is labeled as a minus. If you just learned something new, let me know by hitting that like button. Which is why test tones that you might get when you purchase a DD1 or download off the internet are usually in terms of zero dBs and then some cut from zero dBs like a negative five dB or a negative 10 dB test tone track. The negative dB tracks are all recorded at a lower level than the zero dB track. If you were to play a zero dB test tone in your system and then measure your voltage at the speaker terminals and then switch tracks to a negative five or a negative 10 dB test tone, the voltage would drop at the speaker terminals. It's a lower voltage relative to the zero dB tone. But we don't listen to test tones. We listen to music and music has dynamics. Some parts are very loud, some parts are very quiet. And the way music is supposed to be recorded, the dynamics aren't supposed to be any louder than zero dB, and most of the music is supposed to be significantly lower than that. So if you set your gains with that zero dB tone, you're pretty much guaranteed that you're never gonna have any distortion or clipping. But since most of your music is gonna be a whole lot quieter than zero dBs, that means your music's gonna be less loud especially the really quiet parts. And that's where this concept of gain overlap comes into play. Now, I don't personally like the term gain overlap because the term is not really very descriptive of what you're doing. Sure, you're doing something with your gains, but what exactly are you overlapping with your gains? Gain overlap means nothing more than using a quieter test tone to boost the output from your amplifier. Let me show you on my trusty old oscilloscope. What I'm gonna do here is play a zero dB test tone through this little home audio amplifier, and I'm just gonna turn the volume up until it clips. And I'm going to then switch the oscilloscope into voltage mode so you can clearly see the voltage. And I'm gonna write that down in case I've gotta do any math here in a minute. Now I'm gonna to switch to a negative 10 dB test tone and what you're gonna notice is that the voltage drops. And if I understand how this formula works correctly, I can take those voltage numbers, plug it into the formula, and that should give me negative 10 dB. Now I go back into oscilloscope mode and what I notice is that my amplifier is no longer clipping. So I'm gonna turn the amplifier up until it starts to clip again. And I should be back to really close to my starting voltage. But the volume knob is further to the right, so it's set to a louder level. If I go back to the zero dB tone and play that, you see that I get some pretty gnarly clipping. But it's only gonna clip on the loudest parts, the dynamics. Most music is gonna be between negative 12 and negative eight dB, so most music is gonna play just fine without any distortion or clipping. And if you have the rest of your signal chain set up properly, this clipping only happens when you get your system cranked up to full tilt. For moderate volume levels, you'll have a nice range of dynamics and a clean system with no distortion or clipping. That explains what gain overlap is, but it doesn't answer the question which test tone you should use when setting the gain overlap, or rather how much overlap you should build into your system. If you need to pick up some tools for setting your gains, I've got links to all the tools that I use down in the video description. Well, you always start with a zero dB test tone. You use the zero dB test tone to set up your primary source unit, your head unit, and make sure that you've got it as loud as possible without distortion. And then you move through every piece in the signal chain, your bass knobs, your digital signal processors, your equalizers, your crossovers, anything that you have in between the head unit and the amplifier, needs to be set with a zero dB test tone so that each one of those items is gonna be loud enough so that they're gonna be above their own noise floor, but not so loud that you're clipping or distorting. 
And if any of those things in the signal chain are distorted, you're going to end up just amplifying that distortion down at the end of the signal chain where your amplifier is. And you don't want to do that. Now, when you get to the amplifier itself and you're getting ready to set the gains on your amplifiers, that's where you get to make a judgment call. If your goal is to extract every last bit of power out of your amplifiers and you're not that worried about clipping and distortion, then you're going to want to use the negative 10 dB test tone to set your gain overlap. Now, subwoofers can handle more clipping than your mids and highs, and it turns out that our ears don't pick up the distortion down in the low frequencies as quickly as they do in the high frequencies. So it's very common to use that negative 10B tone when setting up your subwoofers. With subwoofers, it's common to use a bigger overlap. So even if you wanna to try to get all the power that's possible out of your mids and highs, it's probably a bad idea to use the negative 10 dB test tone for that amplifier. If you're into the sound quality thing and you're shooting for the cleanest signal possible, you're probably going to want to stick with a 0 dB test tone. Now, in that case, if you want to get some more volume out of the system, you're going to have to spend more to get a more powerful amplifier, and that'll give you a wider range of dynamics. Whereas a negative 5 dB test tone is a decent compromise between the two. You'll get some clipping, but not as much as the negative 10 dB test tone, and you'll still be a lot louder than you would be with a 0 dB test tone. But that whole process is entirely up for you to decide when you're setting up your amplifier. Try several different ones and see which ones you like better. If you happen to have one of these, this is the SMD DD1 Plus. It is designed with gain overlap in mind. In fact, it will let you dial in any amount of gain overlap that you want. The chip inside the device is designed to do all of the math behind setting your overlaps on the fly. If you pick one of these up, you'll see it comes with two different sets of test tones. It has, of course, the 1000 Hertz test tones and the 40 Hertz test tones. And then there's two for each of those. There's a zero dB tone and then there's a gain overlap tone. So the way this device works is you hook it up to your amplifier and you use the zero dB test tone to set up everything from the head unit all the way back to the amplifier. You don't have to go through and plug in like the RCAs on every single component, but you can. The distortion detectors actually use an RCA style plug, so you can just plug RCAs right into this if you want to. So when you're ready to set up your amplifier, you turn up the gain until you get distortion and it'll actually display a voltage. And I'm going to write that down. I might need it here in a second. Then you hit this read button. What that does is it plugs that voltage number into the formula. And so what we've done is basically zeroed it out. We're saying at this voltage, we get zero dBs worth of gain. Now, when you hit that read button, it'll switch into overlap mode. And now all you have to do is just adjust your gain until you get whatever amount of overlap that you want. And the chip inside this thing is just doing the math on the fly. And that's the beauty of these SMD devices. You don't have to stop and do any math, just follow the instructions. And that's really handy if you're working in a shop. It's fast and accurate. It will save you time and time is money. But it might be a tad bit too expensive for your typical DIYer. And I consider that extra expense a math tax. If you can do math, go ahead and get you an oscilloscope. Skip right over the multimeter method. Oscilloscopes have gotten so cheap that you may as well go right ahead and use one of these. And if you're not terribly good at math, well, <laughs> you're going to have to pay the math tax. Now, if you want to trim that math tax down a little bit, I've got a ton of videos that show you how to set up your gear both with and without math. Click on this playlist right here to catch those videos. I want to say thank you to all of my patrons over on Patreon. I couldn't make this video without them. Here are my $10 patrons with a special shout out to $25 patrons, Dylan and Bo. I'm the DIY Audio Guy. I will see you on the next adventure.